Well, again, it's football season, so the last 24 hours really hadn't been a lot different for me. Uh, we worked seven days a week, and we came to work yesterday just like we did any other day. How'd that go down yesterday, though? I saw you in the parking lot, and you said you, didn't, you hadn't talked to anybody yet, and then within a matter of minutes, you're the interim head coach. It was totally true. Uh, I was sitting in the car talking to my wife, and I get out, and this gentleman come up to me, and he's like, are you the new head coach? I said, not to my knowledge. And I uh, went inside, and my phone was in, out there, and, and Coach, uh, well, Vince called me and uh, told me what was going on. And so that's how I found out. What do you say to the team once you're named interim head coach? What will you say to these guys this week to kind of get them right? Well, again, I think, you know, the bottom line is everything that we do got to be about this team, the seniors and the uh, young men that are in this program. Uh, we're going through tough times. They're used to winning. We're not. And uh, the thing that we want to do is try to make these next two weeks uh, as fun as we possibly make them. Vince said that he believes the talent level here is better than what they've been playing. Do you also believe that? Well, again, I, you always can be better. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, if you're a football player and you think that you arrived, then you're probably not a very good football player, uh, even as a coach. You know, if you think you're at the top of your game as a coach, and, and that's the way you feel, then you're not a very good coach either. So, you know, you always can get better, and we definitely can play better. Lorenzo, with, with the guys, Vince said that they respect you, and some of the guys have come out and tweet on, on Twitter and said about the respect that they, that they have for you. What does that make you feel like? It's a tough situation for them to kind of back you up after what they've been through. What's that make you feel like? Well, it always makes you feel good when you, uh, you have young men that, you know, believe in you. And, you know, I've always uh, uh, told people, you know, this is a wonderful uh, opportunity to, to be coaching at a Power 5 school, but it's bigger than football for me. It's always been bigger than football for me because I think we are put into a situation where we have the responsibility to develop and uh, help produce uh, young men after football. And that's been always been my approach. You know, I always want to make sure that I'm coaching them on the football things, but I want to talk to them about life as well. I know how you are, and I know about. I know it's football season, but last night when you went home, was your head kind of spinning? And what's what, what's this like for you to be in this situation? You know, not at all. You know, really, uh, I'm blessed to have this opportunity to be the interim head coach at Louisville, and uh, you know, the thing that I constantly think about is the young men that we're dealing with. Uh, that's coming in this building uh, every day, you know, trying to get better as a football team. And so uh, it's not about Coach Ward and him being the interim head coach. I, when I spoke with the staff that's here yesterday, I told them this is not going to be about me. It's not going to be about them. It's going to be about what we're going to do for these young men for the next two weeks. What was their response to Vince's uh, comments yesterday? And, and did you learn anything about your team and how they responded? Actually, I, I don't know what their comments were because we weren't in the meeting. Uh, we couldn't be in the meeting because if we was in the meeting, then we couldn't practice tonight. So it was Vince and, and uh, his staff only. Have you, have you learned anything about the response since that meeting? Well, again, you, you, you hear things, and, you know, I know that the guys are, you know, excited about uh, the change uh, from some standpoint. You know, a lot of them are, you know, excited because Coach Petrino did a great job here, and he did a uh, – all these young men out here now was recruited by uh, Coach Petrino, and they know that's an opportunity that you just don't get every day to come and play at a, uh, a school like Louisville in uh, a Power Five a conference and, and having that opportunity. So they're real appreciative of what he's done, but they're happy about uh, seeing some change because, again, when you go through a season, you lost seven games in a row, you know, everybody thinks that you need change. How do you – Not totally. You know, again, uh, I'm a coach, and Vince is looking from, you know, uh, his standpoint. You know, of course, we always can give better effort. You know, I, there's plays that we, we, we grade every uh, Sunday on the young men that play that guys get loafs. And uh, you don't want to see that as a coach. And so we definitely can pick up our effort. Uh, but, you know, I, I think overall the guys has, has given great effort, but I don't think they've given the maximum effort. How do you juggle with the, the staff changes, not just Coach Petrino, but, but Nick and LD and Ryan also losing those guys and you still have to, you just kind of have to move responsibilities around? Yeah, and what we're going to do, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and uh, put it on record. Um, 
Coach Van Gorder on defense still will be the defensive coordinator. He'll coach the linebackers. Uh, Grady Brown was the corner coach. He'll coach the entire secondary. Uh, so he'll coach the safeties in the corners now. I'll move to the D-line. I have some D-line experience from South Carolina. And uh, me and J.B. Lagerman will uh, coach the D-line together. And uh, that's how we'll do the defensive side of the ball. And then the offensive side of the ball, uh, Coach Galloway and uh, Coach Summer are still the coordinators, but Coach Galloway will be the play caller on Saturday. Uh, and he'll also coach the quarterbacks. Uh, the quarterbacks and the receiver will meet together. And uh, in the practice, fish back when our GAs will, will do the, the quarterback drills. And then, of course, uh, Kobe is the running back coach, and Coach Summers is the line coach, and uh, the, uh, we still have the same tight end coach. Right. Richard. Have you talked to Coach I have not. I have not seen him. I have not spoken to him. I, I did send him a text, and uh, you know he responded, and that's where we are. What steps will you take during the week to make sure that you, the guys, the coaches left, are prepared to? organize the team and, and game plan for Saturday. I know you said Lonnie will call the plays. W what adjustments do you have to make to make up for uh, losing losing the guys you lost yesterday? Well, again, it's, you know, anytime you are put in this, this situation and you, you're, you're shorthanded, you have to, everybody have to pull together and, and do uh, other duties. And, you know, I think uh, I feel very confident that Coach Galloway and the offense staff will put together a simple, really good game plan for our quarterbacks and the offense. And uh, that's what we're going to do on defense with Coach Van, Go Van Gorder. You reached out to all the recruits yesterday? To, uh, I, I, I talked to a, a good many. Did, what was your message to them? I know it's a, a day of a lot of change. Well, again, I think any time you choose a school, it shouldn't be about a coach. It should be about that university. And uh, that was my message to them. You know, coaches can change every day, whether it's a negative change or it's a positive change when uh, coaches decide to leave jobs. So you choose a school because you love that environment, you love uh, that program. And so that's what uh, every young man I talked to yesterday, that's the message I gave them. Well, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. But uh, the true story is, you know, uh, we was in spring practice uh, when I played Alabama and a guy came across the middle and I, I hit him fairly hard. And uh, <laughs> Coach Curry said that you really wham that guy. And then it took off. All the players start calling me whammy. I was telling someone yesterday that if you went back to Alabama today and asked them how Lorenzo is doing, they ask you who you're talking about. You ask them how whammy is doing, they'll tell you he's at Louisville, hopefully doing a good job. People call you that around you also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's a known name. It's a known name. And, I, you know, I, because of the way I got it, I appreciate that name. Do you prefer it spelled with an H or not an H? W-H-A-M-M-Y? Yeah, that's how I spell it, okay. W-H-A-M-M-Y. Make sure. Yeah. Lorenzo, for the next two weeks, how do you balance between running this program and the uncertainty of your own future? This is not about Lorenzo's future. This is about the young man that's in this program. I've been doing this for 27 years. This is the fourth time I'll be going through uh, and been on a staff that they lost the head coach. So it's not new for me. It's not about me. It's about the young man that's in this program. You mentioned talking to recruits. How will you proceed as far as visits and that kind of stuff? I mean, it's got to be obviously difficult. Well, again, uh, Vince is very involved. He's the decision maker. And uh, as long as I'm on the contract here, I'll recruit for the University of Louisville. Uh, uh, defensively, I mean, what, uh, scheme-wise, what, what do you feel like you really want to do over the next two weeks to try to get some kind of improvement? Well, we definitely want to get better. We won't change the scheme. Uh, I think that will be wrong to do for the young men. They've been doing something from spring ball all the way until now. Uh, we'll just try to simplify what we're doing and, and try, you know, we have to eliminate the big plays. And uh, we'll, if we simplify our scheme a little more and the guys uh, can learn what we're doing and, and fit the particular plays correctly, we'll be okay. We'll be better. Oh, sure. Liner was a college quarterback himself. He's, he's, he will have 100% say on who's playing quarterback. You expect Malik to be available? Again, I, I don't know. That will be left up to our staff, training staff and the doctors uh, where he is. And uh, so hopefully he's available. Uh, if he's not, we've got to play with the ones we have. Renzo, you guys did get beat up <clears throat> pretty good the other night. Physically, you had some guys go out with injuries and all that. How were they mentally when you met with them? It's been a lot going on the last 72 hours. How do you feel like this team is mentally right now? Well, I think they're in a good place. You know, uh, 
Vince did a good job last night. He had a team dinner, and uh, you know the kids was over, and the coaching staff got to sit around the young men, and and they was they was upbeat. You know, with everything going on, you, know, you never know what's how a person is taking it inside, but what you can tell from the outside, I, I think they handled it very well. What can you bring these guys from your background and and life and coaching and even before? to deal with, you know, something like this, adversity and uncertainty, because they're going to have it later on, too. Uh, will you share anything with them uh, like that? Well, again, it's all about attitude. You know, I, I tell people all the time I never have a bad day. And because it's attitude, you know, no matter what situation you go through, you can find a positive. And that's the way I've lived my life. I always want to find a positive, even when it's a negative situation. We can make something that's negative into a positive, and that's what I preach to the young men. And, uh, you know, we'll – will hopefully be exciting uh the spirit will be up uh we will we will definitely uh try to do things in an enthusiastic way in everything that we do from this point forward who are your mentors are there people you you've called in the last 24 hours to get some advice from who do you lean on you know not really uh i didn't haven't called out there's a lot of people that i do lean on, lean on that's uh but you know i think i've been around enough great head coaches uh, from Frank Beamer to uh, Steve Spurrier, uh, Art Shell, you know, I've been around a, a lot of good hits, even Coach Petrino, and I've learned a lot from them all. And, uh, you know, I think the thing that you have to do is evaluate the situation uh, that you're being placed in and see what you need to do to try to change the morale of, of the situation that's going on. And so I didn't call anybody uh, really to, to ask for advice. I think I understand what these young men need right now. How, how hard, when you were talking about morale, how hard has that been over these last few weeks with teams scoring you know, 50 points, really trying to you know, keep them motivated? You know, again, uh, for us defensively, you know, the guys is coming to work every day. You know, we, we haven't done things right. Obviously, when you get up, give up that many points, we haven't done things the right way. But it's, it's never because they hadn't come to practice was effort. And, uh, you know, we as coaches have to make sure we put them in the right position. Uh, to make those plays, and then uh, you know we got to make sure that we're not putting it uh, them in a position where one guy make the play. If he don't make it, it turns into a touchdown. So those are things that we're addressing as a staff, and then they got to make sure that they do what they're supposed to do as uh, a defender as well on the particular play. What would you tell the fans? What would your message be to the fans about this weekend and the last two weeks of coming out and supporting these guys? Uh, uh, if they're a true Louisville fan, they will be here to support them. You know, I think it's not about the coaches. It's all about these young men. And uh, regardless of uh, the record, these young men are University of Louisville students, athletes. And uh, they should definitely come out and support the student athletes in this program. Is there a chance for looking at NC State? A little bit. We spent a little time on them yesterday. Yeah, Very good program. Uh, you know, Coach Doran's done a good job there. You know, offensively, I looked at him the most. Uh, the quarterback makes him tick. Finley is a he's a really really good quarterback. Very very similar to me with more experience as the kid at Clemson. He didn't get sacked. I think he'd been sacked five times all season because he get rid of the football. He can diagnose uh, a defensive coverage and he knows where to go with the ball. So you know, he he makes the offense goes. The, with everything that happened yesterday, it must have been a lot for the, the players, the, the fact that they have to play a game on Saturday. What will you tell them about your expectations for them? Again, uh, we control what we can control. And uh, that's what the message will be today when I have the first team meeting where I'll officially get to talk to them. This is not about – this is about what we can control. And the only people that really matter is those that's going to be in that team meeting room as far as controlling what they can control. And so that's what it's going to be about. We control what we can control, and everything else will take care of itself. Anything else, Coach? All right, Coach. Thank you.